Hello everyone, welcome back to Talk Tuesday. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I've wanted to talk about for a really long time, like way before I was even doing crime stuff, like back when I was still doing beauty type videos and back when I was in my sorority. And some of you may not know that about me, but I was in a sorority. I've never been a big partier, so it wasn't always like very easy to fit in with that whole situation. <laughs> but I have had the full Greek experience. I have experience of fraternities, the sororities. I know the deal, except though I will say it differs so much school to school, but I wanted to talk today about hazing. This is something that doesn't just happen in colleges either. It happens all over the place. It can happen in sports teams, stuff like that, but it's definitely most common in sororities and fraternities. Now I have to say my sorority did an excellent job with this. My sorority was very well maintained, managed. We were disciplined. Like there was a no hazing policy, very strict. I have never been hazed. I can say that completely. And if anyone attempted to ever haze me, I would have left in like three seconds. So, but I do know of people that were hazed because the Greek system is very weird. Obviously there's sorority world and there's fraternity world, fraternities for men and sororities for women, for those of you who don't know. But the rules are very different because they're not like ran by the same people. It's, it's completely different. So the boys get away with pretty much anything. The girls, it's very strict. I know there are some sororities out there that still haze, but for the most part, the girl world is really like pulling it together and banning that. A lot of sororities have a very strict no hazing policy, but the guys on my campus did whatever they want. Like it seemed like they had no rules. And then there's this really weird and pretty sexist rule in Greek life where girls are not allowed to throw parties in their house, but men are with alcohol and everything. So they're just creating an environment for things like what I'm about to tell you today to happen. Today I'm going to be telling you the story of a boy named Gordy Bailey and what happened to him in his first year at CU Boulder. This is very close to home for me. I literally went to college like within an hour of CU Boulder and I've been there so many times. I'm, I have friends in the Greek life. So this was very, um, I don't know, it, was, it hit me really hard when this happened. And when I was in college, I actually wrote a paper on this entire incident. So I've always wanted to have an opportunity to talk about this and tell this as a cautionary tale to those of you who might be drinking underage or even drinking over the age and just not drinking responsibly or just around irresponsible drinking because it can be very dangerous. I always was like overly concerned with safety and stuff when everyone was drinking and I feel like I always got a bad rap for that but that's because I know the dangers of drinking because I've had a lot of drinking in my own personal family in my life. Um, I've experienced alcoholics and I know the dangers of it especially at a young age. Almost half of college students have experienced binge drinking. And binge drinking is basically any more than five drinks in a row for men and any more than four drinks in a row for women. So some of you out there I'm sure have been a declared binge drinker without even knowing it. And we've actually seen a huge rise in the amount of people that are drinking with the sole purpose to get drunk. It is very much in our culture for younger people to want to drink to the point where they're incapacitated. They think it's funny to black out. I have friends who that was their goal was like to black out. Every year, 700,000 students experience alcohol related injuries and 1,700 of those kids die. And that stat is from 2004. So it probably has gotten worse since then. But one of the reasons that students decide to drink so much is because they get to college and many of them are out on their own for the first time and experiencing freedom. Many people that come into college have little to no experience with alcohol. That was me personally. When I got to college, I I definitely experienced more drinking than I was used to. And at that age, you just don't know like what your personal limits are, what types of alcohol are going to make you sick, what types of alcohol are gonna make you really impaired. And those are all things that a lot of people sadly learn as they go in college. Now, there are so many cases of people getting hurt, seriously injured or dying in hazing activities. And what is hazing for those of you who don't know? Hazing is like any type of activity that can be humiliating or painful 
or cause you to be reckless, like daring people to jump off of roofs. I remember there were people that would ride like in the back of a truck and when they got to red lights, everyone would have to drink while the right light was red, just like guzzle stuff. And then they would go again until everyone's like just hammered. There's all types of very strange rituals and just things that are really embarrassing. So this is Gordy. His full name is Lynn Gordon Bailey Jr. And he was born on February 22nd of 1986 in Greenwich, Connecticut. Hi, I'm Gordy Bailey from Gordy Bailey's The Reality Barrier. And if you've never done one of my rides before, you've never lived. Keep your eyes on the road! Barbie. And Gordy was very, very well liked. Like people who spoke about him said that he was just one of the nicest people they even knew. He was intelligent, compassionate, funny. He's a leader. He played sports. I, li I like to draw lots of different things. Um, I, I can draw people, uh, uh, families. Um, you know, I, I use the stencil. And uh, you know, that's a perfect circle when, when I draw the head of the... <laughs> Of the, of the man, but you know, I'm really, I'm really more known for, um, for cats. I, I, I draw cats. Here's one. Um, it's a large cat. Um, but you know, I, I feel like my people are pretty good too. He was known to be extremely friendly and warm and just everyone's favorite person. There was actually a time where he made a hugging game, like free hug group at school or something like that. And Gordy went to Deerfield Academy, which is a private school, grades nine to 12 in Deerfield, Massachusetts. And he was involved in sports, athletics, that type of thing. And then he was also involved in theater a bit. And he actually started on the school's New England Championship lacrosse team. In his senior year, he was co-captain of the varsity football team and played both the middle linebacker and offensive guard. And at graduation, he received the class of 2004 award of excellence in drama for his memorable performance in the Academy's musicals and dramatic theater production. Outside of school, he loved to travel around the world. He had made trips to Europe and Africa visiting friends and family and he had a pretty awesome life. He was extremely into reggae music actually and played guitar so he was very talented but Gordy graduated high school in 2004 and that following fall he went to Colorado to become a CU buff and he didn't hesitate to get involved in his school. He joined his fraternity. He became what they call a pledge so you're kind of like in this weird trial period where you're not a full member but you're like pledging to try to be one so he was a pledge for a fraternity called Kai Sai, and he had also joined the club lacrosse team so he was having a really great start to school so September 16th 2004 it was Kai Sai's bid day now bid day is the day where you announce to the new members who is in the sorority or fraternity it's like the first day that you're in you get the word whether you're in or not now everyone does something different after this in my sorority we just went back to our house and like had a little party with all the new people and they actually had the tradition of taking all the boys into the mountains for bonding they then blindfolded all of the boys took them to the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest where they were told to consume four bottles of 80 proof 10 high bourbon whiskey and six bottles of Carlo Rossi wine around a bonfire in 30 minutes and this is a really common um, type of hazing actually and someone in the group tells them you know none of you can leave until these are finished and there's all this pressure because you're kind of like you want to be considered cool these are all new people normally you don't know anyone from like high school or anything so there's a lot of pressure and you're kind of competing with your other pledges like you don't want to look lame and someone can drink way more than you so some of them just drink insane amounts like amounts that they've never drank before that they have no idea how they're going to react so after all the pledges drank all of that liquor they took them back to their fraternity house to have this big party so once they got back to the house they continued partying i'm sure they were just i would be unconscious at this point so at this point gordy was very drunk just like most of the other guys that were there and we're not sure exactly what they did all night but around 11 p.m they put gordy on a couch they had wanted him to sleep it off and during that time his brothers started drawing on his face with sharpies to kind of play a prank on him so that when he would wake up he'd be like oh shit i drank too much how am i gonna get this off my face they put other guys in there continued to party and then 10 hours later around 9 a.m a call came into the dispatch is he breathing? Uh, I don't know. He's not waking up. Wake How up. do you know he was drinking? Uh, I got back last night and they were a bunch of them were all drinking. Is he blue or cold? No, I don't, he's not very cold. He doesn't 
doesn't look blue. So you can't tell if he's breathing or not? It doesn't look like it. You don't think what? It doesn't look like what? It doesn't look like he's breathing very much at all. At all or not, not very much? It doesn't look like it at all. Do you see his chest rising? Well, he's lying on his chest. Okay, can you turn him over on his back? Hang on. He's a big guy. Like how big? 230 pounds. Okay. I've actually been in this situation before. I'd really like to do a whole Talk Tuesday video on it. I have been in the situation at a fraternity party where someone was unconscious and the, everyone else cleared the party but me. It was a crazy experience. I've always wanted to tell a story, so give me a thumbs up if you guys want to see a story time for me. I'm not sure if you guys still like seeing that type of content from me, but anyway. Police got there as soon as possible, but by the time that they were there, there's nothing that they can do for him. I mean, it's way too late. Gordy's parents got the news shortly after, and the day that he died, no one from the school even contacted his mother or father. A memorial service was held in Dallas at St. Mark's School of Texas on Tuesday, September 21st of 2004. And after Gordy's death, his mother Leslie brought legal action against the Alpha Psi Delta chapter of Chi Psi. And the Interfraternity Council actually lost its affiliation with CU in 2005, which is a really big deal. This means that no fraternity on the campus will be recognized as a legit fraternity. Of course, instead of Kai Sai admitting that they were having a problem with hazing and they needed help and trying to, you know, make the chapter better after that, they actually got right on the defense and hired a lawyer. And they immediately started throwing Gordy under the bus, saying that he did this to himself and that he had a drinking problem. And many people actually will probably make the argument on this video that he did do this to himself in a way. He was the one drinking. No one was holding him down. No one forced it into his mouth. I mean, he picked up the bottle and put it to his mouth and drank it. And while that argument is true, at the same time, the overall culture of hazing is a big issue because when you're in that moment, when you're trying to be accepted in this brand new world and these people are telling you this is the cool place to be and here's what you gotta do to do it, you just might do it. So yes, you can't hold somebody accountable for murder or anything, but certainly we need to look at the issues that we have with hazing because it's pretty shocking how many times this happens to people and it still had shook people when I went to the school. If you remember the video that I did on the Stanford prison experiments, you may remember the whole psychology behind someone in the position of power and someone who is powerless. And it's very interesting how people will start to act when they feel like they are not in a position of power. A lot of people see hazing as a tradition, a passing right. I mean, a lot of people in my sorority wanted to do hazing, like was mad that we couldn't do hazing. And I mean, most people didn't want to, but some people were like, that is what the sisters before us have done. This is tradition. but. When tradition is resulting in people's lives ending, don't you think there's a major problem there? On April 25th of 2005, five of the fraternity brothers pled guilty to providing alcohol to a minor. They were removed from the fraternity and they were required to do some community service and they all had deferred sentences. So definitely wanna know your guys' opinions on that one. Gordy's mother, Leslie, and Kai Sai went back and forth for four years trying to come up with a fair amount. At the end of everything, in undisclosed amount of money went into something called the Gordy Foundation. And this foundation was started by Gordy's mother to work to stop hazing, binge drinking, and educate students about the dangers of alcohol. Gordy's story has now been used as an educational tool for the fraternity world. And also they implemented a rule after this that all Greek life organizations have to have a live in person there. And we did when I was in a sorority. For example, they mainly want students to understand how important it is to make a phone call if someone is unconscious. Don't worry about getting in trouble. This person's life means more than anything. Always call, always call. Oftentimes in states there's laws like the safe haven law here. I'm not sure how many other states have that, but it protects you as the caller from being, you know, given, given a minor in possession charge or something like that. You should never, never, I'm talking to people who have just started in this world or have just started in college, never allow someone to sleep it off, never. The amount of alcohol that you have to consume to pass out is very, very close to the amount that you need to kill yourself. The Gordy Foundation pushes an acronym called PUB and it's to check for signs of alcohol poisoning. It stands for puking while passed out, unresponsive to pinching or stimuli, breathing irregular or slow, skin cold, blue, and clammy. And any of those things are a trigger to call 911, even if you're not completely sure. The Gordy Foundation also helps
helped produce a documentary called Haze. I highly recommend it. It is very educational about this stuff. It tells you more about Gordy. His parents are very involved in it. I just really wanted to share this story with you because I know so many of you have probably been in situations where you've been peer pressured. I've always had to deal with that because I was always the one that wasn't drinking most of the time. I've had my moments. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely understand that pressure and have fallen into that pressure many times, uh, drank too much and really regretted it. So if you're in college and you're just kind of starting out, my best advice to you is make sure that if you're drinking that you have a plan in place and how you're gonna get home. And another great thing to always do is to have a buddy, someone that you check in with. This person's gonna make sure that you are in your bed at the end of the night breathing and okay. And it's a shame because that's what you're supposed to learn in a fraternity or sorority. You're supposed to learn all about sisterhood and brotherhood and sadly not everyone in it learns those lessons. But that's it for me today guys. I definitely want to hear your thoughts below so hit me with a comment. Definitely give me a thumbs up on this video if you want to see that story time soon. And that's it for me today guys. I hope you're having a great day. Stay safe, drink responsibly, and I will see you next time. Bye.